Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. Is there anything that brings out the pedant in his 007 worshippers more than the Daniel Craig gun barrel sequences? Then no, stop getting Bond wrong! <laughs> Ah, the trusty gun barrel sequence. The traditional opening to a James Bond film from its first realization in 1962's Doctor No until 1999's The World Is Not Enough, it stayed relatively the same. Sure, the music would differ, the framing might change, some credits might be placed up front, and some effects may be added here and there, but for the most part, you can count on the constant, reliable sight of white dots moving across the screen from left to right, a larger circle appearing with James Bond inside. The hero pivots, shoots, red blood trickles down the screen, and off we go into the adventure. It's the same thing every time. Comforting reassurance to those of us who value consistency above all else. But since 2002, the series has tinkered with the established format so much that I think that fans go into each new installment wondering if it's even going to be in the film at all. Now, maybe to go back as far as 2002 is an exaggeration when it comes to talking about gun barrel aberrations, but the Dine of the Day gun barrel does provide the first truly major shakeup of the famous sequence, sending a CGI bullet hurtling towards the audience. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh that, 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 that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the, it's the 20th film after all, it's the 40th anniversary. It's fine for them to play with the format in, in, in this context, yeah? Like, who doesn't like a bit of levity every once in a while? Just all the things are back to normal for the next one. It's all fine. Are you trying to rationalise this to yourself? Indeed, director Lee Tamahori indicates as much in his director's commentary that this was intended as a special little flourish and not necessarily an intention at setting a new precedent. So here's the logo, which you've uh, changed to slightly right here. We just thought it would be amusing uh, for the 20th movie, 40th uh, anniversary, to uh, to throw a, a projectile straight down the barrel of the gun, just just for this as a one-off. I don't expect I don't expect it to happen on the next one, and I think it mm -hmm. shouldn't really. It's just a, a more of an amusing uh, aside for those. Uh, you have like the stuff. audience ducking under their seats. Yeah, right. Mr. Tamahori's words turned out to be somewhat prophetic, and true enough, it was not repeated on the next film, but that next Bond film did, for the first time in history, open an adventure with a fade on a shot of an office block in Prague. Well, this can't be right. We must be in the wrong film. I bet it's another one of those Matt Damon ones. Don't worry, I'll go ask the management. But sure enough, we get our gun barrel just at the end of the pre-title sequence rather than the start of it. Well, I spoke to them for five minutes and they said that this is the right screening room. Yeah, it is. They just did a different version of the gun barrel. It was really cool. What? But, but it didn't begin with the white dots going across the screen. How can I possibly know if a Bond film is a Bond film without white dots going across the screen at the start? So I'm one of those people who truly love the Casino Royale gun barrel sequence. Given that the film is very much Bond Begins and this whole narrative is going to show us James Bond at the start of his double O career, picking up the various elements and tropes that we associate with him, to utilize the gun barrel sequence in this unconventional way makes an awful lot of sense. And besides the context, I just love the presentation. I love Bond's pose as he spins around and shoots. The blood dribbling down, taking us into the main title sequence sequence is awesome. The way the whole sequence kind of builds to that moment is so expertly done, I kind of adore it. Now, I don't mean to be pedantic, but hey, if you're still watching this video, you're probably a fellow pedant too, but it does slightly bother me that the gun barrel graphic itself looks so shiny and clean and new. I've always adored the original Maurice Binder designed graphic. There's something so rough and stylized about it. It just looks so much cooler to me. And hey, they even teased how this particular graphic might have looked if they'd have used it in Casino Royale in one of the trailers, and honestly, I like it a lot. But even as it is in the film, it's still pretty fantastic, it makes sense, it leads into a kick-ass title song, it's a great surprise, and it was obviously going to be just another one-off, right? The whole point of Casino Royale is obviously to see Bond becoming the Bond that we know and love, and by the end of the film, he says the line, Bond, James Bond, so next time it's going to be business as usual, gun barrel at the start, right? Right? You must be pretty excited for this, huh? Oh, you bet. It's been six years since I've seen those white dots go across the screen. Six years! Can you believe it? <sighs> yeah, in a frenzied attempt at catching Casino Royale lightning in a bottle twice by replicating as much from that film as possible, 2008's Quantum of Solace does not open with a gun barrel sequence either, but instead places the gun barrel at the end, which may have not totally sat well with me at the time. 
But after a while, I did come to kind of appreciate what that symbolized by being at the very end of the film, with Quantum of Solace being a direct sequel to Casino Royale, continuing on the emotional plotline of Bond and his feelings of betrayal and grief about Vespa Lind, ending the film with him throwing her love knot necklace into the snow. The gun barrel being at the very end of the film was like a symbolic closing of a chapter, the same chapter that opened with a gun barrel sequence in Casino Royale. As far as the presentation itself goes, I'm really not a fan of this one at all. It's over so quickly, Craig stomps along, and I get that they were wanting to make his Bond seem more aggressive, more rough around the edges than his predecessors, but eh, he just looks a bit like he's late for meeting mates at the pub after work than anything else. He also looks a bit stooped over to me. I don't know, something about his posture just seems really off. I'm also not a fan of the design of the gun barrel itself on this one. This is designed by MK12, who did the title sequence for Quantum of Solace as well, but eesh, it's just so dull. And then the blood drops down way too quickly. I mean, did they just export this whole thing in the wrong frame rate so we're watching it on fast forward? It's notable for being the only Bond gun barrel so far that has Bond just walk off once he's shot, and I guess this fits nicely with the general speedy vibe of this one, but it just ends up feeling like one massive chore for Bond, like, he's just going through the motions and getting it done as quickly as possible. But whatever, no more playing about with the gun barrel now, right? After these two films, we can just get back to normal, right? That's it. Hmm? Well, skip ahead to 2012, and once again, I think most of us went into the cinema not really knowing what to expect. Still holding out for that gun barrel sequence, huh? It occasionally crosses my mind. It's literally the last thing I think about at night and the first thing I think about every morning. If it isn't at the front of the film, I'm gonna burn down the cinema. Well, you never know. Better look next to... Where'd you go? Is anyone else hot in here? Or is it just me? How could they not put it at the start of Skyfall? I demand an explanation immediately. Hello, this is Sam Mendes, director of Skyfall. Oh, just the man. And uh, one of the first things was uh, the debate we had about the gun barrel logo, which was uh, always designed, or at least in my head, was always intended to go right at the beginning of the picture. But what you see here, now is, um, of course, another version of the gun barrel logo, which is uh, uh, Bond walking and then stopping and lifting a gun. Uh, so when I put it in front of this image, it didn't work at all. It felt like this was a repetition. But in the end, I think it worked out better with it at the end, which is in itself a kind of new beginning. Well, that's all very well and good, Mr. Mendes, but uh, actually that is all well and good. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if there was anyone on Earth that could make me fine with not having a gun barrel sequence at the start, then it's cinematographer Roger Deakins, and the shot that actually does open the film is all kinds of wonderful and beautiful, and sure, maybe it would have felt jarring if it had followed on from the gun barrel, but saying that, it makes it sound like the gun barrel was something of an afterthought for those making the film. I mean, I would have thought that you would compose the opening shot for the film knowing it was going to lead on from the gun barrel, but okay, whatever. Once again, we get the gun barrel at the very end of the film, and as for what we get, Pretty alright, I think. Uh, Daniel Kleinman is back on the design front, and while I still miss the classic Maurice Binder graphic, which was all over the promotional material for Skyfall, so you'd think they'd have actually included it in the film too, but I don't think that the CG barrel design is all that bad here, but it still has that all too polished, shiny CG look to it. I guess I like the details and the lighting, and hey, it fades away into an iris of the Binder logo, which was repurposed with the 50th anniversary symbol, so yeah, maybe it would have felt weird fading from this design design to this design again. The blood comes down in much the same way that it does in Quantum, i.e. far too quick for my taste, but I think Craig's performance is much improved. He no longer walks like he's Piers Morgan leaving his own breakfast show, but rather strolls along, maybe a little bit too casually. He isn't doing much of a good job of hiding that gun either, but the final shot and pose work very nicely. As for the sequence playing at the end of the film, again it makes somewhat thematic sense given how the ending of the film plays out with recurring characters Money, Penny, and Q back in the series, Bond heading into M's office through a padded door to receive his next mission. Just like the old days, it feels like it's something of a capper on a spiritual prequel story of sorts for James Bond, and ending with the gun barrel kind of signifies that it's going to be back to what we know the series to be from now on, right? Alternatively, I'd just kind of come around to the idea that, okay, new tradition from here on out, the gun barrel comes at the end of the film. Fine, I can roll with that, but then in the lead-up to Spectre's release, the rumours started swirling 
that it was actually gonna be back at the start of the film again. You must be pretty excited for this, huh? Excited? That's putting it mildly. It's been 13 years since I've seen those dots move across the screen. Can I switch seats with you? You finally got what you wanted. I'm very happy for you. Why did they make it look so flat? Why is Craig swinging the gun around for all to see? Why are they still using that fast blood drip? Why didn't the iris move around before opening up on the first shot? How have they forgotten how to do this? Conflicted is the best word I can use to describe Spectre's gun barrel sequence for me. Uh, hooray that it's at the start of the film, and I love that they've gone back to using the Maurice Binder graphic, but... Uh, how could they leave it looking so flat? The modernizing of this graphic that took place during the Pierce Brosnan era was absolutely perfect. The design of his gun barrel was such a perfect modernization, and to be completely honest, it's aged wonderfully. You could still use this same thing today and it'd look great. I guess maybe they wanted to hark back to the very original gun barrel where it was just like a still image, but then why break from so many of the other traditions? I've never been a fan of how the lighting adjusts to just make Bond a silhouette before the blood starts dripping and that element has always felt a bit unnecessary to me and I'd have preferred it if the iris just kind of opened up on the first scene of the film rather than fading to black so that we can have this awful pretentious text to begin the film. As for Craig's performance, I like the timing, I like his final stance better than the previous two but what the f is he doing waving that gun around all laxy daisy like this? He's supposed to be a covert operative for goodness sake. But hey, we were close, right? Look, I know it's two steps forward, one step back with these things, it seems, but surely going into Craig's fifth and final 007 adventure, they were gonna give us, surely they were gonna give us a quintessential James Bond gun barrel, right? Oh Christ, here we go again. Don't worry, I'm a changed man now. I really don't care. After all these years, I do not care if it's at the start of the film or not. <laughs> Oh thank god they put it at the start, thank god! First of all, I want to talk about the fact that we actually have two different versions of the gun barrel for this film. The American release version is probably the most conventional, where we go from the logos to the dots coming in from the left of frame, but for the international release, where the Universal logo also plays at the start of the film, the Universal globe fades away to become a white dot, which leaves to the left of the frame to come back smaller and then continue along as the US release does. This is one change to the format that I do absolutely adore, and I don't know if it's anything that we're going to see on any future Bond films unless Universal are uh, a part of future Bond films releasing as well, but seeing that the globe of the Universal logo dissolve away into the white dot and then... I mean, it, it got a huge cheer from the audience on the first time I saw this film and um, it, it gets a smile out of me every time. I'm also actually quite positive regarding the CG design of the gun barrel itself. I love how Bond reflects on the inside of it. I love how Bond fades out and we go through the gun barrel as it reveals the first scene of the film and then that scene reflects on the metal inside too. I think it's a really cool look and of all the Craig CG designs, this is my favourite by far. I think Craig performs it well too. I like that he's in a tux, he has that confident stride, he's just about keeping the gun hidden, the turn and pose are great. So hey, this is all really positive, right? It might not be the exact same thing as what we got in the past, but it's pretty awesome, right? God, that was great! I loved that! Oh, that's good. I thought the lack of blood dribbling down the screen would have annoyed you. <laughs> So I think it's clear that they don't use the usual blood trickle so that they can keep this as smooth a fade as possible from the white background into the wintry white and blue of the first shot and God help me, I'll be completely honest, I don't actually miss the blood. Maybe we've just been through so many changes from the format that I'm numb to such tinkering these days and perhaps that explains why I actually kind of like the No Time To Die gun barrel. I think it updates the format really well and in the case of No Time To Die, the fact that Bond, I guess, misses his would-be assailant you know, from the lack of blood anyway, we can assume that. That fact is actually quite a bit of foreshadowing. 
No Time to Die is also notable for including a pseudo gun barrel of sorts much later in the film, during the big climax of the villain's base. Now, had they not gone with the gun barrel at the start and instead stuck a graphic over this moment to make this the film's gun barrel sequence, that would have been one hell of a mold breaker if the gun barrel sequence had just taken place four fifths of the way through the film. But as it stands, I think of this shot as just being a nice little nod and not a gun barrel sequence specifically. It'll be interesting seeing going forward with whether the No Time to Die style of gun barrel will hold, or whether we'll revert to something with a more classic look, or whether every Bond film will just have its own version of the gun barrel sequence from here on. I mean, Craig is notable as the only Bond to film a different gun barrel sequence for each of his films. Heck, the only reason Roger had to film two was because they changed the aspect ratio of the films. Brosnan, Dalton, and Lazenby only got one each, and Connery himself, too, only had one play in his films, after Bob Simmons obviously played Bond in the initial three gun barrels. At the end of the day, I can't say I have many opinions when it comes to comparing, say, Octopussy's gun barrel sequence with a view to a kill's gun barrel sequence, but when it comes to the Daniel Craig ones, I mean, well, I did say in the title that this video was going to be overly long. <laughs> So, to wrap up, let's rank the five gun barrels of Craig's era. Coming in dead last for me is the Quantum of Solace sequence. Not a fan of the design, nor how rushed it is. It feels like everyone's just embarrassed about having to do it or something, so they're just having to get through it as quickly as possible. Next up is Spectre. I kind of admire it for trying to return to the classic look and feel, but then I kind of resent it for feeling so thrown on at the start and being marred with that stupid, stupid text that follows it up. It feels like an afterthought. In the middle spot is Skyfall. The design is fine and Craig's performance is fine. I don't hate it, I don't love it, I don't resent it for being at the end of the film. So overall, I guess it's just a bit of a blah one for me. I find it difficult to have strong opinions about this one in any capacity. In second place then is No Time to Die, where I think they made great use of the sequence. I love how it opens onto the first scene of the film. I think it's the best looking CG barrel of Craig's five and the actors walk and pose are pretty spot on. So in the top spot, we of course have have Casino Royale and yeah, even though it's the one that breaks the formula the most, it's the one that makes the most sense to do it in this context. I'm not against the gun barrel format being played with when it can be well utilised and inventive, and with Casino Royale, I think that's very much the case. I guess that's very much the moral of this exercise for me. I like my Bond movie traditions, and the gun barrel sequence is one of the most iconic of those traditions. I love sticking on a Bond film and seeing this thing at the start. It's a fun jolt of adrenaline and something so unique to this series that I adore. But really Really thinking on Craig's gun barrels has made me realise that, you know what, I'm not against breaking from the traditional presentation if it's done well, and arguably Casino Royale and No Time to Die are the ones that break from the traditional format the most, but I'd say that it makes more sense in both of their cases, or at least they try to do something cool by breaking away from the tradition. The other three, whether at the start or the end of their respective films, just feel like they're trying to be in that classic style a bit too much, and as such, draw inevitable comparisons comparisons, and they just don't match up with what came before. Though I think it's pretty cool and poetic that Craig's era has been bookended with a couple of great sequences, and as I say, I'll be super interested to see what happens with this sequence for the next iteration of Bond. Just no more Speedy Gonzalez gun barrels, please. Please do let me know your own thoughts and rankings on Daniel Craig's gun barrels in the comments section below. Also below you can click the subscribe button and the Mrs. Bell notification button if you want to stay uh, super up to date on future videos that I upload on this channel. And in addition to that, also below are links to my various social media pages so you can follow me on Twitter or my Facebook page or my Instagram page or even my Patreon page. If you want to go one extra step in supporting this channel, then please do head over to that site for more details there. And with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.